Hi, everyone, and welcome to Indian Grinding Rock State Historic Park. Thank you for joining me on this beautiful Friday morning. Now, looking at the landscape, where does it look like this park is located? Raise your hand if you think this park is located at the beach. Raise your hand if you think this park is located in the mountains. Very good. So this park, Indian Grinding Rock State Historic Park, is located in the mountains. And it's located in the biggest mountain range in California, which is the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Do I have any California kids joining me? Raise your hand if you're a California kid. Oh, lots of California students. Who's not from California, but loves exploring California virtually during this time? So exciting. Well, welcome all of you and everyone to Indian Grinding Rock State Historic Park. Today, we're gonna to be reading a story. And right now we're standing on the balcony here, right outside of the museum. And there are some things you might notice. So you can probably see these structures, and these are called yumachas. So everyone at home, I want you to say the word yumacha. And yumachas are the winter homes of the Miwok people. So this site used to be home of a large Miwok village for thousands and thousands of years. So it's a very important site. And as some of you have noticed, you can tell it, I am in the mountains. You can probably tell because you see a lot of trees, many different types of trees here. Some of the biggest trees we have, the oldest trees we have are the oak trees. And the oak trees produce acorns, which were used by the tribe. There's also big pine trees. You can probably see those really tall pine trees. There's cedar trees, there's many different types of trees, and there's many different types of plants, and there's lots of different types of animals here as well. There's animals like deer. If you've seen deer before, raise your hand. There's animals like big rabbits. Have you seen rabbits? Have you seen coyotes before? Have you seen hmm, a woodpeckers? What about bald eagles? Lots of different animals. If we're really lucky and we look at upwards towards the sky, we might be able to see some of the red-tailed hawks. So many different animals, and these animals were used by members of the tribe. They relied on these animals. So I'm gonna turn my camera now and introduce myself to all of you. So hi, everyone. My name is Randy, and I'll be your guide for this story time today. We're going to be doing the story time inside of the museum, but I wanted to give you a view of how beautiful the park is. And unfortunately, pretty soon, since it's starting to get very hot in California, California students know what I'm talking about, all the green you see is going to turn yellow. It's going to start drying up but we just have to enjoy the beautiful spring day for as long as we can. So thanks everyone for joining me virtually today. You can see some different types of plants below. One of these plants used to be covered in purple leaves and now it's drying up, unfortunately. So you can tell it's starting to become summer. And in the summer, we're going to have, the snakes are going to start coming out and more of the animals that you want to avoid. Now, if you look way over there in the distance, you can see a big tree, big giant tree stuff, and that is an oak tree. And oak trees produce those large acorns. So that's what the park looks like, but we're going to be having our story time inside of the museum. So let's go ahead and say goodbye to the outside of the park. Go ahead and ra raise your hand to say goodbye. All right, and let's go inside the museum. There's lots to see inside the museum. So through this door, whoa, sorry. Here's the big museum here at the park. It's very wide, has a lot of natural light. The touch circles right there in the center filled with different 
important objects. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But we're going to start our story time today over in this section of the museum. And over here, I'm right in front of the Yumachas. Remember those homes that we saw outside that were used in winter by the Miwok tribe? That was their winter home. So that's an up close look at the Yumacha. Now look at the size of this Yumacha. How many people do you think could fit in it? Do you think your family could all sleep inside the Yumacha? Raise your hand if you think your whole family could fit. Oh, okay. Not a lot of students or, or children are raising their hand right now. Now they can be made a lot wider if you needed to, but I've seen students on field trips and a class of 30 kids, 30 fourth graders can all stand inside these yumachas. So they might not look very wide on screen, but they can be pretty wide. And they're made from barks of a tree. You'll also see some other things around this yumacha. Let's play a little game of I spy. So look really closely at the items around the yumacha. And I'm gonna ask you if you see some of these items. So let's see, I spy deer skin or deer fur. Do you see the deer fur? All right, a lot of hands are being raised. So here we go, right up here. This is the deer hide. So many, many deer can be found in this region. Let's see what else I spy. I spy a trap. Do you see a trap? Kind of looks like a cage. Oh, lots of you are raising your hand. So the trap is right here. Did you get it right? There's the trap. Good job. I spy a spear. Big spear used for hunting, maybe for hunting fish. Oh, lots of you see it as well. You can see it's very sharp. I spy some other animal fur. Some really fluffy looking animal fur. And this fur would be used for clothing. And you can see it over here. Did you get it right? Good job. The last thing that I spy is a baby cradle board. It's like a baby carrier. You put the baby inside of it. Do you see what you think could be used as a baby carrier? A lot of you are raising your hand. Raise your hand if you have a younger baby brother or sister. Now, if you look, here's the cradle board. So the babies would be put inside of the cradle board. They would be strapped in so that they couldn't get out, so they couldn't fall out. They have this little cover for shade. And then they would be worn, the cradle boards would be worn over the mom's back, like a backpack. Similar to baby carriers today. This one's just made out of straw. And then the moms could have both of their hands free. So that's our little game of I spy. Those are the things around the Yumacha. Right below the Yumacha, we have this little set here. You might see lots of different types of animals. Those little animal puppets represent the animals here at the park. I'll show you some other things we have here on this little table. Over here, you can see the little Yumachas. These are just little models. You can see they're having some sort of celebration right in the center. So there's two lines of little animals. And then they have a little fire between them. And then over here, we have the roundhouse. This roundhouse is very special. We have a roundhouse outside as well. Actually, I'm gonna show you the picture of the roundhouse outside. So this is just a small little model version. But I'm sharing the picture with you right now. Raise your hand if you can see the picture of the roundhouse. Good, so this is the roundhouse outside. It's just beyond the Yumachas that we saw in the park. So that's what the roundhouse looks. You can see it's very, very big and it's also made out of bark. It has a hole in the center to let out smoke. And this is where Miwok people, members of the tribe today, they still have very important celebrations here. So they come here and they do special dances. 
they baptize babies here. It's a very sacred or important part of their life. So that is the roundhouse. I'm going to stop sharing the photo. And then you can see the little one. See, the little one also has that hole in the very top of it. Now let's play a game of I spy with the animals. So let's see. I spy a raccoon. Do you see the raccoon? Good. If you don't, I'll point them out. Here's the raccoon. I spy deer. You can probably see many deer. Very good. Little fawns. I spy a chipmunk. Here's a little chipmunk. I spy some birds. Do you see the birds? Very good. You can see the birds all over the Yumacha. Different types of birds. Look, there's a little hummingbird. I spy a beaver. He's right by a branch. There's a little beaver right there. I spy a skunk. Do you see the skunk? Here's the little skunk. And I spy a rabbit. Oh, lots of you can see the rabbits. Now, you may have pointed out this little chipmunk. Back here, we have a squirrel. So notice the difference between the squirrel and the chipmunk. Different colors, different sizes. The last thing I notice are bears, black bears. Do you see the black bears? There's several black bears. They're hanging out right in front of the roundhouse. All right, so now we know the different animals here on this table on this little set. Let's get into our story. So we're gonna be reading Coyote at the Big Time. And the big time is a celebration. We have a special big time here at the park in September. And that's when dances occur inside the roundhouse, it's like a big gathering for the Miwok people. All right, so I'm gonna turn my camera a bit. I'm gonna get ready for our story. So we're reading Coyote at the Big Time. Raise your hand if you've seen a coyote before. I remember some of you said that you have. And coyotes can be found all over the state. So you can see in this, this little coyote, he's all dressed up and ready to go to the big time celebration. And I've been to the big time celebration here before at the park, it's really fun. So I think he's gonna have a really fun time. Okay. When coyote arrives at the big time, he is so excited. There is lots to see and to do. So there he is showing up. You can see all the an other animals around. There's also something called fry bread available. If you look down here in the corner, you can see some baskets. They're selling fry bread. The dances have already started as well. See all the animals dressed up watching the dances. Coyote notices one raccoon singing and tapping a clapper stick. So if you look really closely at this raccoon right here, he has his clapper stick. And I'll show you what a clapper stick looks like in just a minute. So one, one raccoon, just like this little raccoon right here. So one raccoon has the clapper stick. The coyote, whoops. The coyote watches two rabbits dancing. Remember, we had two rabbits on our table as well. So we had one coyote, or one raccoon, and we had two rabbits. And three bears dancing. Take a close look at the bears. We had our bears dancing as well. Remember, they were dancing right outside of the roundhouse. You can also see some butterflies as well. It's a big celebration. There's two big bears and one little baby bear. Later, Coyote listens to the bird singers. He notices four colorful rattles. So there are the different types of birds. Some of those birds look like hawks, definitely hawks. And then they have their very colorful rattles. So 
So four bird singers, and we had birds all over the Yumachas, the houses in our set. One coyote sits down next to some basket weavers. So look really closely and you can see the different baskets. Many different types of baskets. So the coyote takes a little break. He sits down next to some of the women who are making the baskets. And if you look at the page, do you notice the baby in a cradle board? Raise your hand if you can see the baby in a cradle board. Look closely. Well, there's the baby right under the mama raccoon. Little raccoon head, so tiny. He is happy to see five beautiful baskets. We'll look at baskets in just a minute as well. These baskets come in different shapes and sizes and different patterns. Made out of things like elderberry. Some of the big baskets take over a year to make. And basket making is still very important in the Miwok tradition. When Coyote is ready to play his drum and sing his good luck song in a guessing game of six players. So you can see the bear is playing with the mountain lion. We do have mountain lions up here too. Over on the corner, right next to that bald eagle, you can see a little bobcat. So some of the animals I notice, we see the deer, the coyote, the mountain lion, the bear, the eagle, and the little bobcat. And so they're playing what's called a hand game. It's like a guessing game. When the game ends, Coyote is excited to join the brush dance. Look at some of the different um, special clothing that's being worn by the deer for the brush dance. See, they have necklaces, fancy skirts, fancy belts. Now there are seven dancers. So go ahead right now, count all the coyote you see. See one coyote. Now go ahead and count the deer you see. Now go ahead and count the squirrels. You're only gonna see one little squirrel. After dancing, Coyote enjoys watching. Eight peon players in a hand game. So they're playing another hand game. So you can see the bear on one side, the coyotes on the other side, and they're right in front of that fire. That fire's there to keep them warm. All the big time fun has made Coyote hungry. He eats a bowl of acorn soup. So look what he has there. Some nice, delicious acorn soup in a little basket. And nine fry, bed, fry bread. So go ahead and count all the fry, bed, fry breads you see. You see a big stack of fry breads. They almost kind of look like pancakes. So lots and lots of different fry breads. He's eating a big bowl of acorn soup. Now Coyote looks up at the night sky and counts 10 stars. Go ahead and count all the stars. Make sure Coyote's right. Count all the stars that you see. He knows it is time to leave. It's gone too late. So now he has to leave the big time celebration. On his way home, Coyote thinks of all the fun he had at big time. So there he goes, he's leaving. Hey, that area kind of looks like mine with a lot of hills, taller mountains around. There he goes. Everyone raise your hand to say bye, Coyote. Good, he's taking off now. He's tired after a long day of celebrating. And now you can see he's fast asleep with a little frog right by him. And go ahead and say the numbers with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good night, Coyote. Go ahead and say that to yourself at home. Good night, Coyote. All right. So that was the story, Coyote at the big time. Now let's go ahead and look back at this, at this little set we have. And you can see how we had every animal 
from the story in our set. So you can notice the bears. We had those rabbits. We had them on two separate sides playing games, playing hand games. You can see all the bird, bird singers and lots of deer as well. So we covered all those animals in our story. Well, some other things I have is in this museum here, we have baskets. Remember, we talked about the baskets during the story and how baskets come in different shapes and different sizes. So I'm gonna turn my camera, show you some of the baskets. All right, let's see here. So here is an example of a basket, like the basket we heard in the story. Something else I have in here are these acorns. These very, very large acorns and they fall from like that big acorn tree you saw outside. They grow very large here. So these acorns would be used to make the acorn soup, like we learned about in the story. So the baskets and the acorns. And over here, we have some more of the animals we talked about today. So you can see the big animal puppets. Skunk, a bear, an eagle, and a deer. All right, let's get ready for our next story. This is an ABC story. So the other story was a counting story. This one's ABC. Raise your hand if you all know your ABCs. Wow, all of you, you should be so proud. Your parents should be so proud of you all for knowing your ABCs so well. So this is called A is for acorn. Remember, I just showed you, where did I put it? Oh, really big acorns here. So this is a story called A is for acorns. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. A is for acorn. B is for basket. You can see in this basket, that's a huge basket. That basket is so big, a baby is inside of that basket. So that basket probably definitely took a long time to make really pretty patterns on these baskets as well. C is for canoe. D is for deer. Remember, we talked about how important deer are. We saw that deer hide as well. E is for eagle. Like that big eagle pup puppet I just showed you. F is for flicker bird, a very pretty type of bird here. It's very important. G is for grandparents. H is for house. So you can see, maybe you live in a house that looks, looks like this. Well, for the Miwok people, they lived in homes that look like this. You can see there's um, the round house, the Yuma house, the, the winter houses, and then right beyond it is the summer homes. I is for iris, J is for juncus, a type of plant. K is for king snake. Have you ever seen a snake before? Raise your hand if you've seen a snake. Remember, I told you, if you were with me since the beginning of the presentation, I said, now that it's gonna be summer, you have to be very careful in the meadow. You don't wanna accidentally step on one of those big snakes. L is for laughing. M is for mountain. I'm up in the mountains, so there's lots of really tall mountain peaks around here as well. N is for necklace. See the necklaces here made out of shells. O is for otter. Unfortunately, we don't have any otters here since we're in the mountains, but there's otters that can be found throughout California's coastline. P is for pine cone. Have you ever seen a pine cone before? Raise your hand if you've seen a pine cone. Maybe you've done arts and crafts with a pine cone before. I have a really large pine cone here. It's huge, oh, bigger than the size of my head. This is a giant pine cone. Maybe you've seen one that big, or maybe you've seen one smaller than that, because that's a pretty large one. Q is for quail. We have lots of little quail birds around here as well. You can tell they're quail because they have the little, um, the little feather right there. So you see them, they're pretty small. They run really quickly as well. R is for rattle. S is for salmon. T is for tree. Remember, there's lots of trees here at the park. We saw some of those trees outside. 
U is for urchin. V is for vulture. Now we don't have any urchins over here, but we have lots of vultures. You can often find them soaring high in the sky. W is for woodpecker. We have a big woodpecker that lives right outside. And he taps and taps and taps and drills a bunch of holes into the wall. There's X, there's Y for the yucca plant, and Z for that baby, the sleeping baby in the cradle board. So Z is for sleeping, nice and calm. All right, so that was the story A is for acorn. I'm gonna show you a few more items today that we talked about in our story before I sign off and let you go. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. I see some other things here though. I'm gonna enter inside of what's called the touch circle. This touch circle is very important. And I'm actually going to turn my camera. So let's see, I'm gonna hold up some, oh, whoops. I didn't mean to do that. That, oops, give me just a second. That happens all the time, I have to say. I'm not very good hitting this little tiny button. Okay, so let's look at some other items on this touch circle table. You can see behind me, we have an animal skin. This is a coyote skin. I'll hold it up so you can see it. It's really thick fur. Very, very thick fur. So here's a coyote pelt that we've had for a very, very long time here at the museum. What else do we have here? Oh, so some of the things that we talked about today that we saw that they would have at the big time celebration are the clapper sticks made from this burnt wood. And these clapper sticks have a hole right down the center. See the hole? And the clapper sticks can make music, they're an instrument. So I'll play it for you. That's how they keep the rhythm, how they keep the beat when they do their dances. Over here we have, what else can I show you? Oh, I'll show you some toys. Since you're young children, you might like some of these toys. These were the toys that Miwok children would play with. So you can see two different types of toys here. One is a boy's toy and the other one is a girl's toy. So this one's actually the girl's toy. It's kind of like a baby doll. And you can see the girl's toy is in the cradle board. Just like we talked about the cradle board, we saw a picture of that baby raccoon in a cradle board as well. The cradle and the baby, the doll's made out of straw. Has some beads for decoration. So that's the girl's doll. And here's the boy's doll, which is made out of wood and has this cap. And that's a cap that boys wear when they dance in the roundhouse during celebrations. So go ahead and tell me, which doll do you like better? Which toy do you like better? So raise your hand to vote. Do you like the girl's toy? Hands are being raised so fast. Over around 70 of you like the girl's toy? Can we beat that? Who likes the boy's toy? 50, 60, uh, I don't think it's gonna beat it. No, it looks like more of you. Like the girl's toy better. Sorry to the boy's toy. Something else we have here. We have some shells. This big shell. Look at this shell. It's like big, big as the size of my head. And this is an abalone shell. So since there's no ocean nearby, the different tribes would trade. Different tribes in California. And remember I told you about those big acorns? Acorns would typically be traded for shells. And I'll show you one more thing, and that's a game. So this is a ball. And this ball is stuffed with different plant fibers. It's wrapped in deer hide and it's sewed together. And this ball is used to play a game that's played outside. There's a game field. And the game's kind of like football. So girls versus boys. Girls have one goal. Boys have the other goal. The boys cannot pick up the ball. So it's kind of like soccer. 
The boys can't pick up the ball. The girls can pick up the ball. And so if the girl's picking up the ball and she runs with the ball, you might think she has an advantage. She's definitely gonna be the boy team. However, if a girl's holding the ball and is running with the ball, the boys can pick the girl up and run with the girl. Does that sound like a game you wanna play? Raise your hand if you'd wanna play that game. It sounds pretty fun. So if you're a girl and you're holding the ball and the boys can pick you up and run with you, you have to run extra fast to try to get away from them. And that's a game that's still played outside in the park. All right, I think I'm gonna show you one more thing. This is another game. This is kind of like the hand games that we talked about. You might recognize what this game is. So if you can see, this game is made out of walnuts, it's filled with charcoal, and some little pieces of abalone shell. Some pieces have a few pieces of abalone. Some have some little beads. And other walnuts don't have anything at all. Well, if you take these walnuts in your hand and you shake it and you throw it on the ground, do you know what kind of game that is? Raise your hand if you know what kind of game that is. And you count all the little pieces up. What kind of game do you think that is? You shake it, you throw it, and then you count it. All right, some of you know, some of you are not so sure. These are used as dice. Did you get it right? Did you say dice? Very good. Oh, so different games made out of different natural resources like walnuts. All right, students, children, everyone watching, I'm gonna go ahead and take us back out into, oops, sorry about that. I'm gonna turn my camera back on, okay. That happens to me all the time. All right, let's go back out onto the balcony overlooking the beautiful spring day here at the park. Remember I said it's going to be summer really quickly and it does get very hot here. So we'll end with this view at the park. Thank you for joining me for our two story times today. So we learned about coyote at the big time, accounting story, and then we also learned our ABCs with the acorn story, with A is for acorn. So thank you so much for joining me today, everyone. Hope you enjoyed your time at Indian Grounding Rock. Go ahead and raise your hand to say goodbye to me and to all the 100, over 100 people joining us for this presentation. Thank you, bye everyone. Check out more home learning programs from sites, important sites throughout California.